Hi everyone, and welcome to our newest episode of Mastering Manufacturing. Today I would like to be doing a video about tolerances in the context of CNC machining, and this will actually be a two-part video, and in this first part that we're doing today, we will be speaking about what we mean by CNC machining, the different processes, and what actually impacts tolerances. The second part of the first video will go a bit more in-depth into the different parameters of a part that may impact the tolerances. Then in the second video, we will be going slightly more in-depth into the main issues that we generally encounter when dealing with CNC machining parts with our customers. Of course, CNC machining is just not one process. As you may know, it is an assemble of several sub-processes that all work in the context of CNC with CAD file or CAD designs. However, as you may already know, it is possible to make one design or to manufacture one design in several possible ways. The two main sub-processes being milling and turning. I think that's very important to uh, decompose those two sub-processes because the two of them have different ways to make parts and that's going to make uh, the parts have very different properties and very different tolerances. So the first one, as I said, is CNC milling and why I think it's important to start with it, it's probably the most widespread use in when doing low volume parts or prototyping that have a particular function. Um, Let's say with CNC milling, if we take this little guy again as an example, we took a block of aluminum, we took some tools that went here on a three axis machine just with two different settings, we removed the material out of the raw aluminum block and we made the geometry as we see it today in front of our camera. The geometry is pretty custom at a microscopic level. And what I mean by that is that you have to take a tool to remove almost every single bit of matter that you will see, meaning if you have somewhere, let's say, a circle, the circle is not going to be created automatically because you have to move point by point on a Cartesian, meaning X, Y axis. You have to move your tool on an X, Y axis in order to make a circle. So let's say here, um, the CNC machine is not going to give you naturally the circle that you have here. For turning, turning as opposed to CNC has a tool that does not move. It's the part that moves. And in fact, if I take this camera lens that I just stole from uh, the camera here, it has been done by taking a piece of raw material aluminum that's been put in the lathe of a chuck, the chuck of a lathe, <laughs> in the chuck of a lathe, and then basically this billet of raw, uh, of raw material has been turned while the tool was not moving. And the fact that the raw material was turning is what made the part. By making sure you have parts mostly with round features that will be able to be done on the lathe or parts with mostly square features that will be done on the milling machines, you will ensure that the best machine is chosen for your application and that you will have the most cost-effective solution for the tolerances that you need. So the second part I would like to cover today is the different things that impact a tolerance in CNC processes. Well, the first one, as we already covered, is the technology. Um, of course, for a given feature, you won't have the same tolerance achieved whether you're doing the part on a lathe or on a CNC machine. That may sound uh, a little bit obvious, but it's really critical when thinking uh, about the technology choice. Um, and of course, there's milling, there's turning, but also when you get into the realm of pipe tolerances, you may have the usage of grinding machines, whether flat grinding machines or circular grinding machines, etc., etc. So if you do need a tolerance that can only that you know can only be made with a certain kind of process, it can be in certain circumstances good to let the manufacturer know. However, if you know that your tolerance can be achieved with several processes, it's oftentimes better to just leave that freedom to the manufacturer, but to know that in return, they may have uh, the freedom of choosing between turning or milling, depending on what tools they have available and what they prefer. Now, the second important point that impact tolerances, of course, is the design. Um, if you have a design with very intricate features, um, and you require, let's say, a plus minus 0.01 uh, a millimeter on it, in some instances it may be possible, in some instances it may not be. So it's very important that you educate yourself and speak to fellow engineers if you're an engineer yourself who designs parts to know what generally is the best practice when considering tight tolerances. And the third one that's actually very important that some people may overlook sometimes is the material. Uh, the most common example being the difference between metals and plastics. Plastics generally behave uh, not as nicely as metals when dealing with tight tolerances. That is of course a very general case unless you deal with very specific high-end plastics as we covered in our plastics video. 
but generally speaking, it is slightly easier to achieve type tolerance for the same design and same technology with metals as compared to plastics. Now, there are two extra points that are actually worth considering and that have impact, an impact on tolerances to a lesser extent, uh, but that are still interesting to note. And these two points are quantities and surface finish. And why I'm mentioning quantities, you may be thinking, what does have quantity of parts manufactured do with the tolerance? Well, a lot of things, actually. If I'm making one unit of this part or a thousand units of this part, as we covered a little bit in our video about the economies of scale, the manufacturing process chosen by the manufacturer will be different, and especially the setup on the machine will be different. Meaning, if I have to manufacture thousands of these parts, if I'm a manufacturer, I will probably at some point make a fixture and look much more into process control so that I can deliver a very reliable process throughout. Meaning, if you have very high quantities, you will probably need some more fine tuning of what you actually want for the, the final tolerance to be. But on the other hand, you may have much more stability because given the quantities, the manufacturer will be able to do the research to bring you consistency. And then the last one is surface finish. Um, that's often a problem we encounter when dealing, let's say, with hard coat or secondary surface finishes that change the thickness of the part after the machining. If you have very, very tight tolerances, for instance, knowing that a hard coat finish or anodizing type 3 may add up to 50 microns of thickness, if you're really looking for a part that has a tight tolerance, it will be more challenging to keep that tolerance after the coating in a consistent way. So if you have some areas with very, very tight tolerance that you cannot absolutely uh, sacrifice or uh, make compromise on, it is probably better to look into um, a surface finish like chromate conversion coating that will not really impact your tolerances or even altogether decide to mask those areas so that they won't be affected by the secondary surface finish. So thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed this information about tolerances in the context of CNC machining. And um, if you want to join us for the next video, I will be actually covering a little bit more in depth the main issues that we generally encounter in regards to tolerances with our customers.